So um, I only have seven minutes. I hope I can finish in ten. Um, <laughs> this is about the software engineering field. I'm Andy Marks. I'm an associate professor in the department. Been here uh, almost as long as you have, two years. Uh, um, anyway, I feel at home already now. Let me talk to you about the software. Um, I know you're all students here, but you may or may not know that we actually have not only computer science program in the department, but a complete software engineering uh, program from bachelor all the way to PhD, including an executive master's program in software engineering. So as you think about moving through your uh, education here, consider possibly switching, or uh, maybe you're already in the software engineering program. How many of you are in the software engineering program as opposed to computer science? There you go, two out of uh, 50 or so. So hopefully uh, there'll be more. Um, so uh, our group uh, uh, is uh, six core faculty. These are tenured and tenured faculty. The individuals who primarily are in charge with running the research labs. Um, Dr. Lawrence Chung is uh, uh, a, known, a very well-known figure in, in uh, requirements engineering. He's actually the father of the notion of the uh, defining and negotiating soft goals in requirements engineering. That is, uh, but these days he's uh, uh, has, uh, uh, also working in smartphone apps and medical records and diagnostics and so on and so forth. Tien um, Nguyen is um, uh, our most recent recruit. He started uh, as associate professor um, in the department, uh, what's that, two months ago. Um, so if you will be a uh, fresh PhD student, he's somebody you want to look up because he is anxiously looking to recruit students to build up his lab coming here. His expertise is in mining software repository, software analytics, uh, uh, program analysis and understanding, uh, and things like that. Um, Professor Eric Wong, um, he is very well known in the field of reliability and testing. He is actually uh, the editor-in-chief of a prestigious journal, Transactions, uh, uh, I took the transactions on software reliability, and he's also running the research center on software testing and quality assurance on campus with various faculties uh, across the campus. Um, Professor Jalila Wengström, Lin, uh, Rin, uh, she's uh, doing these days uh, uh, multi agents and visualization systems. Uh, she's also the one who founded and running the executive master's program in software engineering. Uh, her earlier work, I remember being a grad student like you and reading actually papers of hers uh, on software metrics uh, from, from back then. Um, Wing and Jack is another one of uh, our newer recruits, been here for two years, a young uh, 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 graduate at the time. Um, he's an expert in software testing and recently just got a Google uh, Research Award, the uh, faculty award, which are very competitive. There are like a, a dozen of those given out to research faculty around the whole world. Um, so his expertise in software testing primarily and programming languages for all methods. And then of course there's yours truly. Uh, my area of expertise is in software maintenance and evolution, program comprehension. The type of uh, problems my students and I address have to do with evolving large scale software over time. You know, What do you have to do to make changes easier, faster, to improve the quality of the code, uh, to improve your productivity, and uh, other such things. Um, the group has a number of uh, what I call affiliated faculty. Their pictures are not smaller because they're less important, uh, but uh, these individuals, you'll probably see them mentioned uh, when the other groups are being presented. Why? Because they are uh, research cross cuts uh, between um, uh, groups and fields, right? Uh, we have Professor Fortastani, um, he has expertise in formal methods and uh, real-time systems. We have our chair, Professor Gupta, who is a programming language uh, expert. Uh, that's the main area of his research. Or we have Professor B.K. Cohen, who uh, uh, researches on ad hoc and sensor network uh, and other such areas. Computational complexity is one of the uh, experts in, in the department on that uh, area. We also have Professor E. Uh, e Ling Yen, um, if you're interested in cloud computing, um, uh, she's somebody you want to look up. And finally, uh, last but not least, we have Professor Ken Zhang, whose primary research area is in visualization, but he has very good applications 
on software visualization, hence his interest in this research. Um, very importantly, I want to point out, so these are the research faculty, but uh, as, as I said, we have a complete program, undergraduate, masters, and PhD, which requires a lot of teaching, and we have a, a number of the senior lecturers, eight lecturers. These are individuals with very good and long experience in software engineering. Many of, well, all of them, I think, have PhDs, so they have, maybe they're not doing that much research today because they're teaching a lot, but they're the, the backbone of our curriculum, and they have expertise. Some of them, have, uh, like Janelle or Mark Paul, have um, uh, a long uh, history in, um, in experience in industry. And they work anything from programmers to being CIOs of certain companies. And now they share some of their experience with us. So um, I always recommend uh, talk to them as well, not just to the research faculty. If you want to learn more about the field or the um, uh, program here. So what is software engineering about? Let me give you a high level view since only two of you have decided to be brave enough to major in software engineering. Um, and really this overview uh, gives you a hint into what type of research is happening. Right, software engineering is first and foremost about process, right? It's also about product. What's the product we're building software? This is an engineering discipline, so we have to have a product. And it's about people. Right? It's people who build software. It's not, we don't have assembly line yet for software. Right? Um, very importantly, unlike any other engineering discipline, excuse me, software engineering is extremely knowledge intensive. Right? That's, why we, that's why software engineers are paid so well. Let's face it, compared to many other engineers, right? or lower level workers in other engineering fields. More than that, it's a learning process. Building software is a learning process. You learn about the domain, you learn about the code you've written, you learn about your, your colleagues, etc., and the solutions you're implementing. It's a never-ending learning process. As you, you switch projects, you learn from scratch. It's a reason why um, the work is difficult, and you have to have certain training to do it. Now, we do research about all of this area, process people, uh, uh, knowledge, um, um, product, and learning. Now, uh, it's called software engineering, but this starts from science behind it, right? The research we do is very scientific. We do empirical research primarily, but we also do theoretical research, and we have different research methodologies that some of them exist in the other areas of uh, computer science, some of them are unique to software engineering, right? Because it is a very practical, product-driven field, right? So it's science is engineering, but it's also craft, right? Building software, if it would be so easy to describe it as we could write an algorithm, we, 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 you know, all of us would be out of business, right? Uh, if you could push a button and have software generated. That's not going to happen anytime soon, unless one of you starts a PhD and invents something we don't have about yet, right? So what are the main areas of research? As I said, in process, uh, uh, people look into things like agile processes and process improvement. Domain specific processes are very common these days, model driven software engineering, etc. Model driven software engineering is the one that allows you to push the button at the end and generate code. Right? In requirements engineering, uh, there's a lot of work on things like conformance of requirements, how to capture them best, how to represent them, how to negotiate them, etc. Um, in terms of the product, formal methods is maybe the most sciencey and theoretical part of computer science. In other words, how do I prove that this piece of code is correct? Right? This is not math, this is engineering. But we would like to be able to prove it, right? Rather than dump it out there and see if it works. Right? Testing, of course, is the more practical side, or let's say the non theoretical of, of showing correctness. We use testing and testing techniques to show that the code does not have errors. And finally, my favorite, last but not least, is the human factor. I told you it's about people. It, we have programming language and development environments, and these need to support our cognitive processes of how we read code, how we write code, to enable us to be more productive, communicate better, and not uh, manage uh, the knowledge that we produce. Finally, there are cross-cutting areas of research. So these are, uh, you know, cross-cutting in the sense of it's all about process, product, and people. 
So software analytics, right? The, the big data, and I'm sure we're going to hear about big data and uh, other groups. Uh, this is its form of uh, expression within software engineering. It's called software analytics. We generate so much knowledge and data and software, you need to have special tools and techniques to analyze it. Software security, of course, we will hear about uh, security in a, a few minutes. Uh, but there's many aspects here. How do I make the software itself more secure? Or how do I build software in a secure way? Right? So there's a process aspect, there's a product aspect. Software design, this is something you probably heard about in the law. It's actually an area that is being explored and it's exploding a lot in the last few years. We are designing and building software differently than we did in the past decades. And finally, um, there's new types of software in, in the main specific areas. You know, mobile has its own mobile system, have their own unique uh, uh, requirements, gaming, concurrent, embedded, cloud space, ultra large scale, etc. So all of these unique domains have very unique requirements, and we as software engineers kind of step in, collaborate with our own colleagues in those fields to come up with ways to better do uh, software. So, in the end, just remember, why should you do research in software engineering? Because there's so much variety. It's a field on its own, it's as big as the rest of computer science combines to some degree, right? It's about process, product, people, knowledge, learning, and science at the end of the day. So you can work on any of these or all of these if you 